Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of M Guy. This episode is really going to be an excuse to have some V12 exhaust porn. And one of the drawbacks of this car is that it has such amazing sound insulation that you can barely hear the beautiful exhaust note that well from inside the cabin. Now this is great for when you're on long journeys and you want to keep your cabin nice and insulated, make the journey less tiring, but when you want to enjoy that V12 sound, it's a, a bit of a drawback. So I've been taking the car out and I've had one of my cameras stuck on the back, uh, just trying to record some of the sounds that this car makes um, for my own benefit really just to hear what it sounds like from outside because I, I don't often get a chance to hear it when someone else is driving it. And also I wasn't really able to pick that that V12 note that it should have so I thought we'd do a bit of scientific experiments today and have a bit of fun trying to analyze what the sounds are that we get from this car and uh, also um, come up with lots of excuses to hear some some nice v12 exhaust notes so obviously being the s-class it is the top of the range in terms of luxury and internal appointments and materials and everything else it's it's utterly gorgeous in here um, but it does have incredible soundproofing the the windows um, are all double glazed um, I can show you here but I don't know if you can see but the top here I'll show you the top of the glass you can see there's actually two separate panes of glass which are kind of sandwiched sandwiched together um, that really improves the sound deadening. Um, the materials are also such high quality that you don't get any real sound from the, from the, from the engine or the exhaust in the cabin. Um, the other thing is that this is such a long car that the exhaust is way back there, like half a mile away behind me, that you don't really get to hear it. Other people will say, oh, sounds great, you know, but I think, I don't know, I can't hear it. So I stuck a camera on a suction clamp uh, out, out, out the back and recorded some, um, some accelerations and some freeway driving. And uh, I'll let you have a little taste of those now. As I think I may have mentioned in a previous video, um, there's quite a lot of science and physics behind the noises that different car engines make. And I was going to do a, a whole video on this at a later stage, but I think it's just easier just to get on with it, to be honest. So in terms of looking at the sound of an engine, the main generator of noise is the rotation of the crankshaft so that will generate a frequency which is related to the speed that the crankshaft is rotating. So if you assume that a car engine is rotating at say 3000 rpm, if we convert that to rotations per second, uh, so we divide by 60 and we get 50 rotations per second or 50 hertz which is a musical note that we can hear 
and on the musical scale it would be kind of between a G and an A on the musical scale. So that gives us somewhere to start. So when you think about other elements that are generating sounds within the engine, um, the other main one would be the combustion in the cylinders. So that is going to happen more frequently and it will depend on how many cylinders there are in the car. So how, how many cylinders your engine has, has a very direct effect on the kind of sound that your engine makes. So let's take a four-cylinder car, for example. For all four cylinders to go through a combustion cycle, the crankshaft would have to rotate twice because it's a four-stroke engine, which means that the cylinder goes up and down twice for each complete cycle. That means that there would be one spark on each cylinder in two rotations of the crankshaft. So if we then go back to our frequency, um, 50 hertz would be the rotation of the crankshaft and because there are two um, sparks per rotation that would mean that there was another frequency of 100 hertz superimposed on it. So I'll just demonstrate that on a keyboard right now so you can hear what I mean. So for a four-cylinder engine this is the crankshaft note, this is the combustion note. I'll just vary it a bit to give you a sound That's four cylinder engine. A six cylinder engine, we do the same calculation except this time for every rotation of the crankshaft we get three ignition strokes per rotation. Now in musical terms if you multiply a frequency by three you get a musical interval of an octave plus one fifth so I'll demonstrate that on the keyboard as well. For a six cylinder engine, that's the crankshaft note, that's the combustion note, so if you take it to the next step and have an eight cylinder car you will have four ignition strokes per rotation of the crankshaft which means you will have a frequency four times higher than the crankshaft, so in musical terms that means a note that is two octaves higher, and I'll demonstrate that on the keyboard. For an eight cylinder engine, that's the crankshaft note, that's the combustion note, next step a ten cylinder engine, this is where it starts to get interesting because if you multiply a frequency by five, which is the number of ignition strokes per rotation, then you start to get a very interesting interval, which is um, two octaves plus a major third or a, smart, or a happy third. I'll demonstrate that on the keyboard now. For a 10 cylinder engine, that's the crankshaft note, that's the combustion note, And finally, if you get a V12, that means there are six ignition strokes per rotation of the uh, crankshaft, and that means that the frequency of the ignition is two octaves plus one fifth higher than the rotation of the crankshaft. And so I'll now demonstrate that on the keyboard. For a 12 cylinder engine, that's the crankshaft note, that is the combustion note. So you can see that as the number of cylinders increase, the upper note of the engine increases as the number of cylinders increase. Um, all the time at the same speed of rotation of the crankshaft. So that actually gives 
different engine configurations, different sounds, quite distinct sounds. And with the V12 in the Mercedes, it's actually quite a low revving engine. So the main sound that you can hear in the background now that, that um, as I'm driving is the frequency of the ignition strokes. So that is the, the higher frequency of the two. And it's not until you get up into the higher rev range that you start to hear the crankshaft vibration because it's, it's actually so low um, and the car's so well insulated. So what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna put it into manual mode and I'm gonna try and drive it at 3000 RPM. So we will get what should be a fundamental low note, which is the crankshaft rotation of about 50 hertz. And then we should be able to hear the, the ignition strokes, which will be at about 300 hertz. And that should be a note that's about two and a half octaves higher. So we're gonna try and keep it at 3000 RPM. So, the top note you hear when we were doing 3000 RPM, that was a D, and the bottom note is, which is a G, and that is two octaves and a fifth. So I think that's pretty clearly demonstrates that's how the sound is made up. Um, I'm gonna put it back into uh, auto. Um, and when you have notes that are multiples of a fundamental um, they're called harmonics so for example um, double the frequency is an octave that's one harmonic then three times is an octave and a fifth that's the next harmonic four times is two octaves that's the next harmonic five times is two octaves and a third that's the next harmonic and then two octaves and a fifth etc so when you get notes that are harmonics of a fundamental, when they're played together, you don't actually, the, the human ear doesn't distinguish them very easily as separate notes. What it actually does is it changes the, the timbre or the sound of the, the fundamental. It gives it a different tone quality. So like different instruments, like flutes and oboes etc instruments orchestral instruments have different sounds not because they're playing a diff they can be playing the same note but they sound different because they have a different range of harmonics in the series above it which gives it that tone qu qu quality you don't hear those individual notes separately but they just make the make the sound um, have a different timbre to it a different quality and that's what happens with car engines so when you have that um, fifth two octaves and a fifth in a v12 they combine to to provide that particular quality of a v12 um, and i think that's probably why the higher end the higher number of cylinders that you have the more interesting a car engine sounds. Um, a four-cylinder engine just simply has a fundamental and one octave, whereas a, a V10 or a V12 has two, two octaves and a third or two octaves and a fifth, and, and that makes the sound more interesting to the ear. So anyway, I've waffled on a lot about the physics of how this works. Um, I think probably the best thing to do now is just to give you some more um, exhaust porn from the Mercedes V12.
Well, thanks very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a physics lesson on the way that uh, different engines produce different sounds. Um, the physics behind it, it's not that complicated, but it's interesting. Um, and uh, it does explain why, why cars with different numbers of cylinders do make very distinctive um, sounds. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. Uh, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram at mguy.tv or Twitter at mguy underscore TV. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.